Our keynote speaker is among the most distinguished military leaders to call Minnesota home. A St. Paul native, retired General Joseph Votel was among the first Army Rangers to parachute into Afghanistan in October 2001. His accomplished career led him to multiple command assignments, including the four-star commander of two consecutive Unified Combatant Commands, U.S. Special Operations Command, overseeing all Special Operations Forces in the military, and U.S. Central Command, leading all U.S. service members in the Mideast. Please welcome our own General Joseph Votel. Thanks, uh, thanks so much, um, Tom. I, I did grow up in St. Paul. In fact, on those heights right over there, overlooking the river, and I went to a high school about three miles up the road here. And after graduating from West Point, I met a girl that lived about four miles over there. And together, we got married at a church about six blocks from here. And I, te and, uh, and I tell you all that to just tell you how proud I am to be standing here in front of you this morning with these distinguished Minnesotans and with all of you um, to recognize this very important commemoration of the 20th anniversary of 9-11. Along my path, I had the opportunity to serve our nation in a variety of ways, to include in the intensified period since the attacks of September 11th, 2001. On that fateful day, I was serving as the commander of the Army's 75th Ranger Regiment, an elite commando-like force of triple volunteers who represented the cutting edge of our national military response capability. I was very fortunate to lead our initial operations into southern Afghanistan, which commenced with a parachute assault into the Rajasthan Desert of Helmand Province on the evening of October 19th, 2001. I still remember the feeling as we boarded our aircraft with still fresh memories of the images of that very bright morning in September. Each of us, all of the Rangers that, that, that filled those aircraft, were filled with an element of trepidation because we understood what was at stake, the honor of our nation and the protection of our citizens. But with that trepidation was a healthy dose of pride and patriotism, knowing that what we were about to do was both right and just. A lot has happened since that evening, and a lot of it has been good. And as we've seen over the last few weeks, some of it has not been good. There are literally thousands of stories that can be told about this 20-year period. I would like to talk with you about three of them this morning. First, there is the story of the beginning, the horrific attacks that killed nearly 3,000 of our own fellow citizens in their workplaces or as they went about their normal daily activities. This story, of course, is the corner, cornerstone of why we gather here this morning. It is an important one to remember because it reminds us that despite the many blessings of our country, our citizens can be vulnerable in the most benign settings. It teaches us that we must always be vigilant and prepared to defend ourselves and our way of life. And it also reminds us that the world is an incredibly complex, <clears throat> dynamic, and small place. Things that happen in seemingly far off locations can impact us here at home. We can choose to engage or not engage, but it is clear that whatever that decision we take, we must have a strategy that each and every American citizen can understand and support. Second, there is the story at the end punctuated by the sad events of the last several weeks in Afghanistan, which have played out once again in tragic images that we have all witnessed. This story seems to be a conclusion, but I'm not so sure. We still have American citizens and Afghan partners in peril who will require our assistance. And Afghanistan is poised again to be a platform from which terrorist organizations can attack us and our friends cause instability, and perpetuate their toxic narrative. This, too, is an important story because it reminds us that the best intentions do not always lead to the best outcomes. It also reminds us that as powerful and capable as our military and our nation truly is, it is often the intangibles 
that determine strategic outcomes. And it highlights to us that with power comes responsibility and the need to understand, to choose wisely, to perse persevere when necessary, and endure when it is appropriate. And it teaches us that in the complex world of 2021, winning will often have a different connotation than we may have applied in the past. But in between these two stories of the beginning and the end is a third story that I believe is the most important one. It is a story about those who stood up and played their role when the nation called. They fought back aboard hijacked aircraft. They willingly plunged into an inflamed Pentagon to rescue their comrades. They dug with their hands in the wreckage of the Twin Towers to recover their neighbors. They lined up to give blood in the hope that they could contribute to saving a life. They formed citizen cordons for firemen, police, and service members making their final lonely journey home, and then cared for their grieving families and helped raise their children. They greeted soldiers returning from long deployments. They deployed honorably and nobly in far from locations on multiple occasions. And in situation after situation, they stepped forward and did their duty, often at the cost of their lives. These are the in-between stories. And it is here where we learn about the heroism of a young Ben Cop who willingly advances into enemy fire to protect his team, becoming mortally wounded in the process. It is here that we see the values of empathy, integrity, selflessness, and sacrifice for the common good that we all embrace here as Minnesotans and Midwesterns, Midwesterners, and was so well exemplified by Tom Burnett. It is here that we see the better angels of ourself rising to the challenge that the moments present. And it is here that I hope you will spend most of your time when commemorating this solemn event. I think it is essential for Americans to appreciate this point, especially now against a cacophony of voices suggesting that these sacrifices may have been in vain. They have not been. Their service and, and sacrifice mattered then, and it matters now. We cannot allow the story of the beginning or the ending to overtake or diminish the stories in between. I think we must always, always view service and sacrifice in the context in which it is rendered. I'm proud to be a Minnesotan standing here among many Minnesotans, especially on this anniversary, as we hear more and more about the in-between stories of our friends and neighbors as they stood up and answer the nation's call. We have all learned a lot over the last 20 years, and undoubtedly we will learn more. As Americans, we always do, even if it takes us time to do so. But I hope the lessons that we internalize and replicate the most are the stories in between. That is certainly what I am thinking today. Thank you, and God bless America.